I thought I'd give a presentation of how my shelves are doing at the moment. Um, I'm about to reach 1500 physical games. Uh, one caveat to that is that I'm trying to get rid of some uh, box PC games which I've already got on Steam or was able to get on Steam. So there's a good chance that actually it will dip um, if any of those games go. So uh, although I'm about to reach 1500, it may well dip back down again. Uh, so that's 1500 physical games. So um, I'll show you around in a sec. Uh, I've been trying to order them in roughly the release that they came in. So um, it's probably easier to show you the boxes actually first. So if we go up here, you can see that there is a Magnavox Odyssey original up there, right at the top. And then you've got uh, GX. Uh, G7000 which is a video pack um, which is a bit later on we've got um, a grandstand which is one of the um, franchised versions of the 1292 programmable machine and then I've got a, a Binatone which used to be my oldest machine yeah, Binatone um, Color TV 10 uh, which is basically like the Pong chip uh, I've only got one I'm not going mad with Pong, Pong clones. Um, I've literally got the the one which has the most games on it, and also the one that has the shooting games, but through a controller rather than a, a light gun. So um, I have no intentions of buying any more uh, Pong Pong chips. <laughs> it's just a one that used to be my oldest machine, but now I've got um, the Odyssey. I uh, don't have any extra games for the Odyssey yet. I did consider trying to buy a um, light gun, but uh, I do wonder whether there is some issues trying to post it or ship it from another country i don't know whether it gets caught in customs because it does look like a real rifle so i'm a bit kind of like oh you know is it worth the risk because it's quite a lot of money anyway um no extra games for the Magnavox odyssey so at the moment everything just sits in that box um the console is out at the moment on the plugged into the tv uh, might show that maybe if i got a bit of time um but first off so going from right from the start we've got um the PC 50X system, um, which I may have lied. I don't think that's a 1292. I think that's the PC 50X version of the grandstand, um, which plays, I think I understand it, is these two. So we've got, oh, wrong way around, shooting gallery. And I've also got a submarine. I had to buy submarine again. Um, anyone who's sort of been watching me for a while probably knows that uh, I had uh, an awful time trying to record the footage for that. I had to like um, bend the cartridge with my foot. <laughs> There's still an image somewhere around with my foot showing how how I had to bend it um, to try and get it to work. Anyway, I've got a new I've got a new one, so I I can re-record. I think I have re-recorded. I just didn't replace it. Um, so maybe that's something I can do in the future. And then here we've got um, Prince Tronic ones. So somewhere around here. I think, or is it the, oh, I get confused between 1292 these days, you know, and uh, the PC for the X. It might not be um, actually boxed, but I've got a, a Prince Tronic or something similar. It might be the Radofin actually, it might be the Radofin up there. Yes, yeah, the Radofin. So the Radofin at the top, um, Telesports 3, uh, that's the one which, which has got the different colorations, so you can switch the colorations at the back, so there's like red, blue, and a green setting. Usually the green's considered the, the default, but uh, you can do it red and blue as well. Certain games work better, better on that. So um, recent purchase was um, Tank War. Um, I did have a German copy for a Palladium, but I got rid of it once I've got this. Um, can go for a lot of money. I think I bought like bought this one for like 20, 25 pound. So it can go cheap. Um, it's a, a supply issue, not a demand issue. So if you can get someone who can try and sell it cheap, that's really great. There was no reason for it to be any more expensive for that. Um, maybe fifty pound at the most. You know, people were trying to sell it for a hundred, five hundred pound. No, it's not worth that much. <laughs> it's just uh, it literally just tank on, on on a computer, on a on a console. Um, but I think that is about as, as as full as a collection you can get. I don't think there's any of the franchised um, consoles where there's more than five of the seven games. Um, so that is probably going to be what it's going to be like. It's going to be two different consoles uh, for the same system, essentially, because they have different cartridge sizes. Uh, there's, there's three main ones. Palladium was the other one. 
there's a grandstand there and um, Prince Tronic, although the Radafin runs it as well. Uh, next, we've got uh, Fairchild Channel F. Um, I've now got um, a complete UK set. So we can see there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, of course, it looks funny because I'm seeing it like backwards. So it's like, is that the right order? <laughs> and then we've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Then you've got Hangman, which I think is 18. Um, basically, I've got um, one game, US game coming in the post, which is Slot Machine. Uh, and then there's only one game I'm missing, and then is uh, Checkers. Checkers was uh, sort of the rarest game, it was a pre order. Um, catalogue order only in the United States so they don't really come out here really in the UK um, so that's probably gonna be another like global shipping eBay purchase when that eventually comes around um, I haven't bothered getting box ones for the US version so we've got a uh, casino poker which I bought and played recently finished it um, we've also got pro football label hanging off um, I, that's one of the only games I don't really get because I don't get like American football so I'm so sorry but I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Someone has to teach me how to play that sometime. Um, and then in here, I've got um, Alien Invasion with some instructions. So uh, that's sort of the US games. I do have um, chess as well, sort of the, the German chess. Also, have a German copy of, um, I think this is the, uh... yeah, it's got the. Um what you call it the shuttle game like uh, moonlander moonlander that's what i'm thinking of i can think of the name then um so yes i got them in the saba versions um chess obviously only came out in that in that version as well right okay that's the first shelf seven minutes in and we're on the first shelf <laughs> so there's a grandstand box there a fair child channel um atari games um they're starting to like overflow now so they're having to move over to oh this shelf which is really untidy at the moment so i've got um video pack games which is the board games there's um quest of the rings there's conquest of the world and then there's the um wall street game which um i have to admit i haven't actually played properly yet i need to uh, try that sometime uh, there's a few extra things there's a Retron 77, which is uh, HD, which is basically a stellar emulator in the box. Um, and then there's some bongo <laughs> drums for the uh, GameCube. And some 3D glasses for my um, uh, Samsung PC, uh, TV, which uh, I sometimes play um, PS3 games in 3D. It does work. It's weird. <laughs> there's probably better things out at this point. Um, but there you go, so there's loads of Atari games. I'm not going to get them all boxed, you know, I'm not that mad. Um, but here we got um, G7000, which is the video pack. Um, the problem with these ones is, you can probably see here, there's there's a number one there. The cardboard box originally um, did have the numbers on the side, but then they moved over to these plastic cases, which is the vast majority of the older ones are. Um, they did the further along the uh, library it goes. Eventually they did decide to put labels on the side so we've got blackjack super b killer bees and i think there's another one yeah neutron star um at the later end um but it's kind of like it's like the anti shelf kind of console because there's no way of labeling it on the sides unless you stick things on it um so it looks awful and as you'll see i haven't got any, any space therefore um i would have split this onto two shelves but you've got like a good 50 games on one shelf because it's doubled over there's no other way of storing it at the moment so it's kind of like stuck like that um i do have a modded g7000 um so it's uh, composite which makes it a bit easier to stream or um just plug into a tv uh, the picture is slightly clearer but it's not not like it's not like a grand <laughs> not like a grand change really it's just it's mostly the same uh, now we have with the 1292 um, and I recently managed to get hold of a big box load of uh, games which uh, meant I got uh, quite a few of the games I was looking for um, I was thinking of, uh, which ones was it it's things like drafts spiders web which is quite rare as well um, 
I did get head on recently, but I think the copy I had in that pack was better, so I sold my one I had before. Uh, even Prize Fight, I had a broken copy of Prize Fight. Um, I'm giving it away now to someone who bought another another game, the the broken one. Hopefully they've got a a good chance of trying to repair it. I didn't have any luck personally though. And here on this as well as the um, Vault Mace games, so they had a few Vault Mace games and a converter as well. Um, so you can plug that into your 1292 and then you can put Vault Mace uh, cartridges in. This is great because there's a couple of games, there's uh, Leapfrog and Munch and Crunch which is unique to the Vault Mace. Um, it also does have a few other games which are quite rare like um, Backgammon. Uh, which I don't have, so I'm only looking at uh, Backgammon and um, the programming hobby module. So to, in my eyes, I'm only missing one game. Hobby module is an application rather than a game, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm only missing one game on that console, uh, which is a bit cheeky, but you know, uh, if I I'd, if I get the uh, Vault Mace version, I'd be quite happy. I think I'd, I'd still consider that a complete collection. Ideally, I'll I'll get one eventually, which is one of these boxes, the Astronic Star boxes. Um, so yeah, um, just in terms of collections, um, I'm first going for sort of Atari released Atari games. I'm I'm nearly there. I've got like half a dozen I still need to get. There's hundreds of of official released twenty six hundred games I still need to get. I've I've got like a hundred and hundred and eighty, I think. Um, there's over 460, so there's there's no chance I'm getting a full collection at any point. Uh, with the video pack, um, I do have technically all the UK Power East games. Um, the 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 odd one there is um, Morse number 45. Um, I've got a, a reproduction of that. I mean, I'm quite happy to state that you know it's a reproduction. It's not a real copy. I'm not too bothered about that at the moment um, and I've got a few of the games that uh, came out for the um, upgraded version the video pack plus or the Joe pack or there's there's several names for it um, it was supposed to be called the Magnavox Odyssey 3 in the United States but I don't think it ever came out um, might have been one sort of um, prototype copy um, but not all of the games are compatible only a few of them are so there's a couple of games I think there's like um, Norseman or something. Um, I think that one's exclusive to the Plus. It's, it doesn't work on a on a video pack, so I don't include them. So in terms of UK copies, all I really need is a legit copy of um, Morse, and then I've got a complete UK set. And I've got most of the other games on Europe that uh, I could use on my video pack. I just don't have the the two which are exclusive to um, Video Pack Plus. Wow. This is how long it takes to talk about uh, an entire collection, right? Uh, next up, got uh, Intellivision. So Intellivision is a, another console which I'm getting quite a high uh, number of the PAL games. I think I'm about 70% at the moment of the library, so I've still got a good like 20 or 30 left. I am running out of games which I can buy for less than 20 pounds, so I'm kind of getting into that kind of like oh dear, we're getting into the high, the high value ones. Um, the big one is going to be Turbo. So Turbo did come out on the television as well. I have played it on stream before through use of uh, FromCart, which is uh, here. LTO Flash, brilliant guy who sells these. Uh, really helpful and it's a really nice little box with it as well and instructions. Um, you do need a wire to connect it up because it is like a serial port. So um, I think my PS3 charging wire works. I can't remember, but there's um, one of those types, uh, but they're really good. Um, and I've even got some of my own homebrew on it uh, and a shout out to Chris Reed because he, he develops quite a lot of uh, video games on these consoles as well a bit of an inspiration for me to try and uh, learn to use assembly um, so I've even got one of my games I've made on there um, working so yeah uh, <laughs> I don't have a box for the Intellivision yet so if anyone's got like an empty Intellivision console box uh, and want to sell it to me I'd, I'd be interested um, so yeah, I, I can't remember how many exactly I've got. I think it's about 90 something uh, PAL games and I've got about 60 of them I think at this point. So I've still got a good like 20-30 uh, to go. Uh, ColecoVision, another console I don't have a 
uh, box for so again if anyone's got a <laughs> wants to sell me a cheap uh clicker vision console box you'd go for it um i only got one box game here i'm not going for box for clicker vision um by the atari i think they're just too rare occasionally gets people who sell them like just just empty um i felt like i missed out there's a few that went early recently which i could have probably gone and bought um, i do have a lot of the um attachments as well so i've got like super controllers for like a rocky game I've got the wheel, although it's broken. Again, you can probably see that in um, when I'm playing Turbo. Uh, the, the wheel's off, but it still plays, so I can still use it. It just needs reattaching. I did try to glue it on, no luck. Um, yeah, so in terms of second generation, this is the one which is my smallest collection, technically, because I've only got like 30% of the PAL uh, games. It's going to be a long haul. It's going to be, I know, you know, at least five years before I even get anywhere near a, a complete collection. I don't think I'll be getting a, a complete collection anytime soon. Shame, really. Um, and then we're finally getting to things that people actually know about. <laughs> this has got a NES. Um, I did have a NES box, but I lost it when I was still living with my parents. Uh, this was my first console, so I had Atari 2600. Uh, and then my next one was a NES and I didn't look after things at the time so I've only got a few of the boxes of original games I've got um, Galaxy 5000, Gradius, um, Isolated Warrior, Mega Man 4, um, Double Dragon, Ultimate Air Combat um, and Super Turrican and Shadowgate um, and Pro Pro Protector which probably shows you how many box games I've got since then because uh, I have uh, Fax and Andy I have Iron Sword and I have Excite Bike and that's it. <laughs> I I don't buy a lot of NES games. I've also got a ROM cart now. So it's kinda like what's the point? Um so when I bought the box, I also bought a couple of other games. So I've got um a couple of golfing games. Um uh, Ninja Turtles, which I used to play a lot on the Amstrad six four six four. And then Super Off Road, which is you know not a bad game uh for NES. So, um, yeah, I did probably pay a bit too much for the NES box, but I got some cheap games with it as well, so uh, I'm not too bothered. Anyway, on we go. So this is sort of my pride and joy. This is a uh, 7800 collection, so I've got an entire grey box collection. Uh, the only issue is, uh, because I was, wasn't was super keen on paying too much of the time, I've got a centipede without a box. And I've got Barnyard Blaster without a box as well, uh, but otherwise I've got the games. Um, great, great system. I love it. Yeah, okay. It, it had its faults. It came out too late. Um, wasn't powerful enough. Um, but actually some of the games that came out on NES, I would say these ones are better. Um, the main feelings of it was probably the sound. Um, there's a few other things as well. Um, there was a lot of things that crippled it by trying to have backwards compatibility compatibility which is great um but then it, it failed in other, in other things so whew, okay here we go back um my system um recently got um the vanished omens i really hate this series because i never know how to pronounce it is, is it yees or wise i've always said wise personally um here we go there we go there it is um I've got some some games recently as well for it. Um, it's not a a big console I collect for, but once I've got all of these, I'd I'd seriously consider going for my system games. Um, but it's the sort of start of well, I've got ROM carts for it and NES. <laughs> I'm never going to buy every NES game in the world. Um, it's just not going to happen. Uh, so there's sort of the two consoles where I go. Oh, I'd love to have more games for it, but. Um, got rom carts um and it's too expensive and there's too many so i'm just going to move on i love sega but i'm going to move on so ah it's really hard doing this now i've got the non-consoles um ignore that that's that's supposed to be somewhere else um we've got the <laughs> commodore 64 gs and I've got Robocop 2, I've got Pang, I've got Navy Seals, and I've got um, a couple of other games for it as well. Um, I've also bought Shadow of the Beast, so that's another game uh, for it 
which I'm going to be getting soon, and then a GX4000, which is the Amstrad. So these are famously two uh, microprocessor machines, so which um, tried to break out into the console market. Didn't do very well, neither of them. Um, but I've got a good 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 um, GX games, which is probably about half half the collection. So I'm on a good 50% on that now, so well happy about that. I do have a ROM cart as well for that. You can play some of the original sort of uh, 464 games, which have been converted as well. So there's Trailblazer, which I actually loved at the time on uh, the, the 464. I loved that game's bits. Doesn't quite work properly, but um, I just spin it up every now and again just for nostalgia. Um, and oh, chucked in there, you may have seen there is three Turbo Graphics games. That's all I've got at the moment. Um, that again is quite expensive. I'd love to get that box because I find that the the cards are so small. I wouldn't want them to be loose like like the other cut systems. I'd like to have them boxed. So <coughs> sorry, I've only got three. Um, do have it boxed. I have a modded version. So as soon as the uh, the mini was announced, I know it's been um, delayed again now. Um, but as soon as the mini was announced, I checked on eBay. Oh, there's a modded one with with RGB on it. Uh, RGB SCART. Um, and it comes with a, a Mega Drive transformer to to convert the signal. So um, I just bought it, <laughs> and it was dirt cheap. You know, uh, I can't believe how how cheap I got it, but. Uh, Hey, you know, I got it and I got a ROM cart for it. So, uh, who cares? You know, I've got it. Um, three games at the moment. I would love more games for it. We'll get around to it at some point. Um, here we've got the, the CD consoles. So, this is sort of the period where it first started getting CDs. So, that that there at the back there is um, CD TV, which is Commodore again. Um, and then I've got CDI sort of the famous sort of long long ones there um then i've got mega cds which was often in a double double jewel case even when it didn't really need it i've got amiga cd32 um do have a boxed console for that um mega cd i don't have a box for it but i do just keep it in a, in a mega drive box it just sort of fits really nicely so it's still quite safe um yeah, so, and then we've got Neo Geo CD. So, we've got a Neo Geo CD, I've got a pocket colour, as you may have noticed me moving just before. Um, I tend to buy the Japanese games. They're so much cheaper, and they just run in English anyway, so, um, yeah. And then, finally, <laughs> I've got my only boxed uh, 3 game, game, uh, which is Powers Kingdom, which is a RPG uh for the 3DO. Um, I do have FIFA that's, that stays in the console, um, but that, other than that, that's the only games I've got for that system. And then finally, next to my really badly painted tank, I have two 32X games, which I do have boxed. So um, 32X is another system I'd love to have boxed. And there you go, there's the um, Amiga 32 box there. Uh, and then there's my Sega boxes including Sega Saturn there um, and then there's there's Nintendo next to it as well so most of them are boxed now here we have the mess which I call the uh, the uh, Nintendo portable um, shelf um, it collects dust a lot we do play actually quite a lot of games on it but um, I just don't have enough boxes to store things in so it ends up in a bit of a mess um, anyway 25 minutes in and we're not even halfway <laughs> uh, mega drive not a great lot of uh, new games i've got for it to be honest um because i've got the ever everdrive it runs 32x mega drive mass system and some game gear games so i buy them occasionally but i don't i don't go overboard um and the same for the super nintendo now i've got a rom cart i really don't I really don't go for it. Um, recent purchase though was uh, Young Merlin, which I remember playing when I was really young. Um, it's probably like a really bad game, but you you just remember games from your youth. You think, oh, I'm going to buy that one day. <laughs> so I did. 
Um, you may notice the price I paid for um, Super Metroid 6.99 at the time. I, I traded in um, Legend of Zelda and Pac-Man on NES complete for a pound each because I did only had a fiver and I needed two more pounds so I traded two NES games in perfect condition. Oh, oh the pain. If only just my parents just let me have the two pound. <laughs> anyway, um, that is like a, a good example of uh, managing money and, and learning about it because, you know, I wish I just waited another week maybe and like paid the extra two quid. Anyway, Sega Saturn, pride and joy. Um, I've got loads of games. I've got Panzer Screen Saga. I've got uh, Shining Force 3. I've got Guardian Heroes. Saturn Bomberman. I've got most of the really expensive ones, but the thing is, I, I never paid that much because it was sort of my current console when it was coming out or just sort of finishing. So um, I was able to buy a lot of the games when they're quite cheap, uh, especially when they're second hand uh, before the internet came up and uh, destroyed everything. I do have a few um, copies because I do have a pseudo Saturn cart now. So I do have the complete collection of Shiny Force 3 in a single case. Did want to spend more money for a special case, so I just went for the regular one. Uh, Dragon Force 2, which I, I'll be honest, I can't get working. Uh, and Police Knots does work, so um, yeah. So I, that's the only games I've bothered to get um, sort of better prints of. Um, partly because some of these games don't tend to work very well when I tried to um, burn them myself, so it was really nice to get someone else to, to do it for me um, on Etsy, typically. Uh, there's a Japanese mouse. Um, really frustrating because certain games like SimCity 2000 it doesn't work with, even though it would be like the best game for it. Um, but it does work on things like um, Virtual Cup. So even if you haven't got a TV that can do light guns, a lot of the games do use the mouse as well, uh, thankfully. Um, some of it is just like code that was in the Japanese version and they probably just for forgot or didn't can be bothered to take out. Um, in some games, I think they did take the code out. So, um, unfortunately, some of the English copies of games that, which did use it in Japan, I think, doesn't work. But things like Virtual Cop does. Um, there's a few other games as well that use it, which is great. Um, <laughs> got two here. Um, so, got PS One, which is now overriding. I'm surprised I managed to get all of these on on one um, shelf because. Uh, I think I've got like 100 and something. Um, PS1, PS2 is definitely my biggest collections. And given how big some of these these are, I'm surprised I managed to fit them all on one. I don't believe that. Um, underneath that, I've got N64. There's also the Video Packs uh, chest system, which takes a big box. Um, again, N64 is one of those typical consoles where people don't keep um, the boxes. So I have like one, two, three, four, five, six box box games. <laughs> and the rest is uh unboxed it. You know, I've got a whole Can I do it quickly? Oh. So there's there's loads. There's also Conquer's Bad Third Day, which isn't mine, it's someone else's, so uh, I'm still borrowing it and I haven't given it back yet. So um if they ever want it back, you can have it back. Um it's okay. Cause I got a ROM cart now play it anyway um we're sort of getting to near the end really now because we got the dreamcast um not a console that I had really for a long time um i've always i've always saying this i never really had that many uh games for it because i got it so late um certainly not when it was out i didn't i didn't have one I had a, a a friend that had one um but they didn't have much on it either and then I've got um, New Geo Pocket Color, so I've got three box games, and I've got like a four or five loose. Um, really nice console, that by the way. If you want like a um, Game Boy Color like system with some really fun games, go for that one. Um, PS2, my biggest number of games. That doesn't mean it's the most complete collection, but it's the biggest number. I've got shelves and shelves of it, and I've had to double stack them. There is no way I can do this without double stacking them because I've just got I've just got loads. So. There we go, there's the other shelf as well. <laughs> um, I've got like the entire Dynasty Warriors collection because why not? Um, loads of RPGs like Ring of Red, Rogue Galaxy, Kingdom Hearts, um, even Evergrace. <laughs> That's such a bad game. 
um, all the now gear solid versions um, so we've got subsistence we've got sub uh, substance as well got Odin Sphere uh, Final Fantasies yeah and I think I managed to get to 30 minutes because uh, that just turned off so I'm assuming there's a 30 minute limit wow okay we're nearly at the end <laughs> I've had to uh, put GameCube and Xbox on the same shelf I, I'm really bad you know what trying to like keep enough space for things um i feel a bit like people might be offended by that given that they're not even the same company but at this point i've just run out of space i'd rather have the uh the older stuff listed than than these ones so uh yeah um i'm quite proud of my gamecube collection but it's quite an expensive system um so i don't have anything like super amazing you know, I didn't have Twin Snakes, uh, but I do have a few. I've got uh, Batankaitos, I probably pronounced that wrong, uh, Tales of Symphonia, Guys of Arcadia Legends, um, Lost Kingdoms, which is like a really random like card fighting game, um, like an action game but with cards rather than a card game, if that makes sense. Uh, I quite enjoy that. Um, Extreme G3, I actually love that game. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just really, really fun for me. Um, and then Xbox, I've got quite a few games. So Xbox famously have this game, which doesn't work on a 360 in PAL properly. So annoying. Um, but there you go. That's Xbox. Whew. One more trip. I think I'll probably just show everything else while I'm down here, I think. Um, PSP, an amazing handheld, by the way. There are so many RPGs. If you're an RPG fan, and you haven't got a PSP, what you're playing at, there's loads. Um, there's updated versions of like Final Fantasy games, Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 4, there's loads, and it's really good. Um, so I'd highly recommend, if you're an RPG fan, get a PSP, there's loads of games. Um, I've got Star Ocean, the remake for the first game. Um, I've got the Wipeout games, I've got Assassin's Creed, I've got... Um, Dynasty Warriors. <laughs> um, I've got pretty much every Final Fantasy game going on it. Um, and a few other games, Metal Gear games as well, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. And I got my PS2 there that's collecting dust. Really should move it out the way. But hey ho. Uh, below there, I've just got like junk things in boxes, bags. And then even further down, I've got. My box PC stuff. Um, it just takes up too much space. Um, I'm not likely to keep my PC collection long term. I think I'm probably going to get rid of most of it. So it's a bit of a sad thing to say. But I don't think really it's worthwhile keeping forever. So um, underneath PS2 we've got 360. Um, that's more of my wife's stuff. Um, I don't really like the 360 particularly. I think there's a few exclusives on it, but not a lot. So, um, and again, boxed PC and just PC stuff in that corner. And then we've got more junk down here, just a box. You can ignore that. Um, and my flute. And then we've got Wii and Wii U games. Um, the Wii does have some good games. You know, it does have some good games. I don't have many of them, but th but it does have some good games. <laughs> There's a lot of RPGs, RPGs again, that uh, came out really late in its life, um, which I'd love to try, but they're just so ex uh, prohibitive, prohibitively expensive. I don't I don't want to spend that much, really, on, on Wii games. Um, it's not the sort of console I'm going to get, like, a full collection with as well. And hidden in here, I have PS3 games which is sort of one of my it's still my main console technically um books and some dvds there's not a lot there and then i've got like books that overflow that can't go anywhere else at the moment so that's why like xbox and um gamecube are currently on one shelf because uh quite simply there's just um not enough space for everything um and that's my entire wall so if i just lift, like lift up there's all my boxes yeah and there's 1500 games 
Now the question is, what am I going to do with it from from now on? Because uh, I'm running out of space for 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 a start, and you know these things used to be in boxes, which was probably taking up even more space. Um, I would like to get complete collections of the second gen stuff, so that's the stuff up there, um, and try and buy the Magnum Rocks games when I can as well. Um, third part, third uh, generation, um, GX or Thousand, and the 64 GS. I would probably like to get complete collections for them. Um, NES and Master System. No, no. And then it'll probably just be the obscure stuff. So I'd like to get um, Leo Geo Pocket Complete Collection. I'd like to get um, Turbo Graphics might be a nice one as well at some point, but I think that's when I'm going to be super rich. Um, 32X, I'd like to get one eventually. Build it up with time. Uh, Sega Saturn would like a Pet Pal Collection because I'm a good third of the way there now, so uh, that would be nice. There's only about 240, so it's not there's not that many, and I've got about 60, so um, I'm sort of between a quarter and a third. Um, I'm just trying to think what other game systems that I think I could manage. Um, some of the CD ones from the from the 90s, I think I'd like to try and get some. Um, N64 might be possible in in, in unboxed, maybe. But yeah. That's my collection. That's fifteen hundred games. Um, th there's not much else I can say really. Then I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, having a view in bedroom because <laughs> this is where it is. Uh, I won't show you the rest of the room because uh, it's not that tidy. Uh, but yeah, um, so the current consoles I got out at the moment is Magnavox Odyssey. I got the seventy eight hundred. I've got N sixty four that's come just laying around but not connected. I've got uh, Turbo Graphics still out. Might change that for another thing soon. I've got NES and a SNES at six. I've got PS3, which is my main console, which I use for streaming things off Netflix, Netflix and uh, Amazon and stuff. I've got Fairchild Channel F, which will stay until the slot machine arrives and I'll get a go in the slot machine. Then I'll probably put it away. Um, I used to have the GameCube out, but I don't have it out anymore. And I just, I just got the um, the Neo Geo CD. So I've got nine nine consoles out at the moment, um, and a couple of them might might be removed and then replaced for others. So uh, yeah, it does get some use. Um, playing um, a few hacks at the moment on Super Nintendo. I'm playing uh, Crane Trigger hack. Um, Crane Trigger famously didn't come out till the DS here in Europe. Uh, so the SNES and the PS1 versions didn't actually get here. Um, so I'm playing on Super Nintendo the um, the Plus version, the hack version, uh, which includes some uh, cut content. Um, so that's great fun playing that at the moment. Uh, and yeah, just trying to finish off some, some collections. So I'm a gamer more than a collector, so I do have a very big uh, spreadsheet with all the uh, games I play and whether they're finished or not. So that's the sort of thing I aim for <laughs> um, so I'm just trying to do that you know um, I haven't done many videos lately um, mainly because of work lifestyle changes we're just trying to get this house a bit more kind of livable um, some of my videos from a few years ago probably showed the sort of state that the house is in it is in a better state now but it's still a work in progress so um, streaming and just general video game playing is being limited um, and I also get caught playing a lot of PC games at the moment so I'm playing XCOM 2 I'm also playing um, Frostpunk um, and occasionally I play a few other games Paradox games mostly um, but there right I'm gonna shut up now because it's probably been like 55 minutes <laughs> um, if I actually get this uploaded thank you for watching um, and see you around.